I am a health inspector. I'll eat at any place. How often am I wrong? Like, what percentage of <sighs> restaurants and food places am I actually eating diarrhea? I would say, <laughs> like, 60% of the time, it's pretty gross. 60% of the time? Hello? Hello? Is this a therapy gecko? Yeah, who is this? This is Kirby. How you doing, Kirby? Pretty good. I'm at work. Uh, what's what's going on with you? How's life? Pretty good so far. What? Uh, how can I get you today, Kirby? What is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about? Um, I have had some interesting jobs, and I, I guess you can decide which one sounds more interesting, and I'll tell you about it. All right, sure. What? Uh, tell me about these jobs. Um, so my previous job, I worked at an animal testing facility for medical devices, and I really didn't like it, but it was kind of wild. But now I am a health inspector, and I, like, go to restaurants and, like, tell them to throw away their gross food and stuff. You got a lot of free – you know, um, what is an episode of SpongeBob with the health inspector where he goes in and they give him everything on the menu, and then yeah, they kill him. I don't yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't really, I don't ever eat the food because, you know, they might actually kill me sometimes. Why would they do that? Well, no, like the food is so disgusting. Oh, how many, how many restaurants have you personally shut down? Um, I did shut down one because they had a cockroach infestation, but they recently reopened. Uh, now, if a how, what, what does repentance look like if someone gets shut down for a cockroach infestation, uh, and they and they uh, what do they have to do before they eventually reopen? Basically, they have to fix everything. That I like, I don't know. This place is really dirty, and I basically they had to clean everything. And I kept going back and putting down like sticky traps, but they kept having cockroaches. So eventually, they didn't have cockroaches, and I said, "Okay, I guess you can open." Mm, okay. Uh what kind of what kind of food did they serve? It was like a like a bar sort of like bar food, like burgers and stuff. Did you get to what what are you what are you looking for when you're inspecting for health? You're looking for mold and mud and stuff. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff so we go off like the food code and the government, you know, writes the code and then all the states kind of make their own version of it. So there's like a lot of stuff and mostly it's like, okay, this is dirty and I want you to clean it. And this food is like old or this food is not being kept cold in your fridge. So a lot of times I go in there and I literally take a temperature and I'm like, okay, your whole fridge is uh, like 70 degrees. So you kind of throw everything away. (laughs) Now I have a question because I'm the kind of guy you know, you know, all you know, you know, like conspiracy theorist people. Mm-hmm. I'm like the whatever the opposite of that is. I'm like, I accept all things at complete face value because it's because whatever. So any I'll eat at any place and I'm yeah. just like, oh, this place exists and they are serving food in such a way that makes me think they're reputable how often am i wrong like what percentage of (sighs) restaurants and food places am i actually eating diarrhea yeah i mean it probably depends on the place but if you're like in my city i would say (laughs) like 60 percent of the time it's pretty gross 60 percent of the time where city do you live in (laughs) I not I don't want to say because I work for the city and I don't want You to don't want to say you but you work you got to you you could help so many people you not come, eat diarrhea. You you don't want to come to my city. I live in Ohio. What, you live in Ohio. Okay. Is what is it Columbus? No. Worse. Smaller. <laughs> okay. Uh are you serious 60%? Um Maybe not. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of places that I would not eat at anymore after this job. Why? What? What is it that you look? What is it that you saw at these places that made you feel that way? Um, like none of their like 
a lot, especially like breakfast places or like diners and stuff, none of their like coolers are working. So they're just serving you like warm cottage cheese and stuff. And that's just really gross because bacteria can grow. Like, I don't know. I have a biology degree. Like, I know about like all the, I don't know. They teach us about all the different diseases you can catch from eating like food that's out of temperature. I think oh, the the I think the average Ohioan more than likely has been eating uh bacteria ridden cheese for their entire life and so they're I don't I mean you're a biology person so I don't know how much truth there is to this but it would seem as though they've developed an immunity to it That is true it is true But you I can don't never know. you can't develop an immunity to the knowledge of it, right? Which makes it grosser. Because right. you could be eating spiders yeah. in your sleep, like they say you do, uh, for years and years and years. And so your body has a spider immunity, but that doesn't make it any less gross when you think about it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tainted by the job. Maybe, But you want to know a place that actually does pretty good around here is Taco Bell, which is surprising. Really? Yeah, all my all the Taco Bells I inspect are really clean. That's awesome. Well, give me are, are there any ooh, are there any fancy restaurants that you've inspected that are better than Taco Bells? Fancy oh, wait, wait, no, no. no. Are there are there no, 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 I, I, are there any fancy restaurants that are grosser than Taco Bells? Um, let me think. Well, the one that was kind of fancy their cooler wasn't working, so I threw away all the food. But they were nice about it. Wow, what else is fancy? Um, I don't know. I'm like looking at my my list of places. I don't have a lot of fancy places. I have this one steakhouse that I need to go to, and whoever did it last time, it was so bad that they said they were going to go back and check on it, but they never went back. So I'm really nervous that it's going to be a shithole. <laughs> How many restaurants in total have you shut down? Uh, me, just the one. But mm. I'm, I've am i only been doing this for a year. Okay, one shutdown in one year is not, not too bad. That's no. pretty good. But, you, man, that's quite a stat. You, 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 you did 60%. Um, like, there's just not a lot of places I would eat at anymore. What's the cleanest place? Give us the give – what is what is the cleanest – restaurant in ohio that you would recommend um i mean taco bell was pretty good let me think of another my jimmy john's is really good hmm so you're saying to me right now that taco bell is the healthiest place to eat in ohio i mean i wouldn't say the healthiest but you'd probably be the least likely to get a foodborne illness from taco bell hmm mm Hmm. Hmm. Um, now what's the worst? Are you allowed to say that? Is that, is that, will that was, are you allowed I mean, to put these, it, them on blast? It's all public information. So I can pretty much tell you whatever. Mm -hmm. The worst, I mean, one of the olive gardens around here had a lot of roaches, which you would think would be really nice. I mean, it's not like super nice, but you would think they'd have some standards. Hmm. Pizza Hut. I literally went into my Pizza Hut inspection, and my eyes were burning. Why? There was chemicals or heat or I don't. I I don't know if it was like something burning in their oven. Hmm. It was gross. What were you doing before really you were health in inspector? There. That stupid animal testing place. It was. It's like medical devices, and we would um like put it in this oven in some liquid and then the liquid would be put on guinea pigs to see if they have an allergic reaction to it. Literal guinea so, pigs? Yeah, so I had to shave guinea pigs every day. Oh, you had to shave them and send them to their doom. Yeah. It was that's, horrible. And then I That's a bummer, man. Is that like did yeah. any guinea did it, did they fuck up any guinea pigs? Did any guinea pigs get get injured? Um I mean some, I mean, some of them would just like, no, we weren't, didn't really injure them because we just put um, the extract on their skin. 
but sometimes like they would scratch at their wounds like we had to inject them too so sometimes they would scratch out their own injections and then they would get like kind of gross so we'd have to tell the vet to give them pain meds and stuff where do you get these guinea pigs from there's like this giant facility i don't remember where but they just breed these animals for testing and then they just ship them to us or to the place they really? work yeah that's why that's wild heard... to... go ahead yeah i don't know if you heard about i think it was last summer there was a animal testing facility where they released a bunch of eagles from and then like there are all these eagles that needed to rest like homes because of they released them from this place I guess the USDA like shut them down, but that's where we, the place I work, that's where they got some of their animals from was that place. That's wild that that's legal to just raise Guinea pigs to get fucked up. There's a, there's, um, there's all these, there's all these like kind of arbitrary lines in human animal, human animal relations, right? There's like, we'll eat and kill the fuck out of a bunch of chickens and nobody cares but no dogs you can't eat dogs and cats those are friends um right you can to- you can totally fuck up guinea pigs now the the i would think here's the thing if you were talking about rats and i and i understand those lines there's something there's something about it where it's where where just as a person you're like all right cow go fuck up that cow but don't but save the dog dog is cool i feel like um guinea pigs are they're above that line they're like yeah they're cute i've been seeing lots of videos of them on uh tiktok and stuff they're like they're they have little guinea pig pageants i don't know if you've seen that um Mm -hmm rats rats are gonna have a tough one it's gonna be a long time before rats get any sympathy because if you told me that they were fucking up rats i'd be like all right who cares you know but guinea pigs i feel like they're above that line yeah we had rats and mice and rabbits too rabbits are above the line rabbits are cute there's lots of cartoon rabbits yeah i I never did any work with the rabbit um i've eaten a rabbit before so i guess huh. i guess it's not above the line but yeah. i regret it i've eaten kangaroo i don't regret it I because think. uh they had to kill a rabbit i regret it because it just wasn't that good hmm. and also they did have to kill a rabbit but why should i regret that and not the thousands of chickens that i've killed by yeah. eating them and then someone's gonna send me a message and be like you should be a vegetarian and i'm like i probably should just so i don't die but um, killing and eating chickens is really delicious. So I'm probably never going to do that. Um, what's, what's, how long do you think you'll be a health inspector for? Honestly, if I work here for 10 years, they will repay my student loan. <laughs> so at least 10 years. <laughs> really? You're going to work as a health inspector for 10 years? I mean, I want my money back. So how it's much, actually not how that much, job. How much student loan debt are you in? $25,000, which is not bad compared to other That's not people. horrible. That's not horrible at all. Yeah. Um, no, but if I can get it back, might as well. Dude, some people, I was watching uh, a clip. Do you know, the, you know who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah. A clip from the Dave Ramsey show came up on my TikTok feed with this dude who is in like $430,000 of student debt from med school Ugh. isn't that crazy i can't imagine i don't even feel like that's worth it anymore i don't even know what you do with that you just have to move to china yeah you just live with it the rest of your life i guess you hope you marry someone rich um is there anything you you uh, like, don't like about the health inspector job? Do you think you'll be able to do it for 10 years? Do you think it'll, is there anything about it that you are like, oh, I might get burnt out by this? Mm, I mean, it does kind of suck when you go back. Like, I don't know. My, like, my overall, like, goal is to help these people make their restaurants better. And I hate it when I'm like, hey, like, these are the things you need to fix. And then I go back and it's the same or even worse. It's like, ugh. Well, what's the point? But it's really not that bad of a job because I literally get to pick what inspections I do every day and I just kind of 
do my own thing. I don't have to worry about my coworkers. So it's pretty nice. Do you ever feel like people are putting on a good show for the health inspector? They clean everything. So uh, when when you come in, but then right when you leave, they're back to, um, you know, dropping burgers on the floor and stuff. Yeah, probably. Cause, well, they don't know that I'm going to come. I just kind of show up. But sometimes I'll say, hey, I'm from the health department. Do your inspection. And they go, okay, one second. And I can, like, hear them, like, doing stuff in the back. And I'm like, oh. So I just walk back there. <laughs> What's your life like outside of health inspecting? What do you, do you have hobbies? Yeah, I have two lizards. I have a bearded dragon and a leopard gecko. How do you feel about eating slash testing cosmetics on lizards? Um, I mean, it's pretty sad. I don't know how lizard skin would compare to human skin. So I don't think they do that. Unless they I do, ta- I just don't know. I was talking to someone about this because I've had people tell me that uh, I should get a pet gecko and I would never do that because there's, there are some animals that uh, have better lives in captivity than the, uh, the world and dogs, uh, captive dogs definitely going to be better off than like a fucking wolf. Or whatever, but I don't think lizards right. fall into that. I think a lizard is probably better running around in leaves, uh, in the backwoods than like in a tube. Probably, but like the lizards that we have as pets are bred, and they're so differently so different from what they would be in the wild. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like you couldn't release it dragon. now. No, it's like a hamster. They came from somewhere, but now they're just you can't release those things. Mm. Uh, okay, you got two lizards. Do you have what? What else is going on? Anything exciting? I, got, I have a cat. I crochet stuff. I'm making a blanket for someone's wedding. So that's like absorbing my entire life. Are you happy? Do you feel like when you wake when you wake up in the morning? Are you like sweet? This is good. Hmm. <sighs> I think I feel better. I'm happier than I used to be, but I don't know if I would say that I'm like completely happy. Well, how often do you have dire moments where you're crying and going, I can't do this anymore? Oh, I don't know. Probably not that often anymore. I feel like okay. I definitely used to. Like when I was still in school, I would definitely have a crisis. But okay. now it's like not even once a month. That's good. That's a I good. Know. That's a pretty. Uh, you know, I mean, the human experience. It's a die. It's sort of a dire thing. So, uh, you know, if you can manage your crises to f- f- uh, a lower lower frequency than once a month, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's been pretty good lately. And I want this to be a message to the people listening you're just you're kind of an example of the idea that ignorance is bliss is bliss yes what's your name again oh yeah kirby 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 is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go um maybe just check your local health department's website to make sure you're not eating poop um i'm going to counter that and say that ignorance is bliss. Sure. Have a good one, Kirby. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks. Bye. It's official. Taco Bell is the healthiest restaurant in Ohio. I'm going to eat there every day now. Hello? Hey, who's this? My name is Jamie. Is this Lyle? Yeah. So, Jamie, <laughs> what's yes. up? What's going on? Okay. So, uh, years ago, um, there was an incident between my son and his cousin. His cousin asked him if he could put his penis in his butt. And it caused them to break out into a little fight. 
and um, they Wait, were like this was b- this was between your cousin and your who? My cousin and my son, my child. All right, all right. So both boys, not really that relevant. And I had a huge problem with the way my entire family reacted with it. Um, you know, at first, everybody seemed to be on my page that it was a really big deal and, you know, they were going to seek some kind of help. And the next time I talked to them, they're like, oh, well, it was actually your kid who said that, not ours. But it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't happen again. It doesn't matter that it happened. And I'm like, no, that's like a huge red flag, actually. <laughs> so it resulted in me going low contact with my grandparents and no contact with that child's entire immediate family. He was being raised by his grandmother. And that's gone on for now. They're, they're 12 now. So that was like four years ago. And we're approaching a time where my grandparents, their end of life, and I've been avoiding these people. And my mom recently found out that I don't intend to attend their funeral. And it's caused a whole new uproar. And so I want to know if I'm the asshole in the situation or not. <laughs> okay. Wh- why are you not close with the the grandparents again? Um, well, because they didn't think it was a really big deal. Um, and when I first went no contact with that specific part of the family, my grandmother sat me down and basically told me that um, other family members were molested and we still like get along and we should all do that. So I have barely talked to them since then. <laughs> was, 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 was somebody, somebody was molested? Well, yes, also many years before even the first incident, um, apparently my older brother, apparently my grandmother walked in on my older brother being molested by an uncle, and she's like, well, I didn't break up the family over it. I just watched them from then on, which was news to me and a a lot of people. This is is so heavily above... What's your Jamie? This is so heavily above my pay grade, Jamie. I I know that I know this that. Is so Even heavily the above my pay on Reddit grade. couldn't handle okay. it. Okay, all right. What? All right. So you posted this on. Uh, all right. I'm gonna recap the story as I understand it. Your okay. son's, your son's cousin. Both of them are eight years old, and the cousin uh-huh. asked the son if he could put his penis in the son's butthole. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And then th- this upset you and so you stopped talking to the the grandparents because they didn't think it was a big deal? Yes. That's that's what right. Did, what did you want to have had what what did you want to to happen in that situation? Well, I think everything probably would have turned out fine. If it hadn't been like Uno reverse, they're like, oh, actually, no, it was the other way around. Your son propositioned him. And also, it doesn't matter. And I feel like it, it definitely matters. Um, Here's the my thing. Kid was act- okay. Actually, you know what? Tell me what they said on what did they what did they say on Reddit before I give my. It thought? was just taken down. It barely got any responses and it was taken down because it mentioned sexual assault in the greater story, even though it wasn't necessarily about that. Oh, and by that, I mean molestation, not like. In- oh my God. So that there's a, and so what I found out is that there's a lot of this in my family. And also at least some of my family members don't think it's that big of a deal. And that's why I've been no contact. That's not, Safe for my kid, or really, even me. I don't want that. I, you know, I don't, I, I don't like the, I don't like the concept of am I an asshole because it's not really helpful. It's kind of yeah. just a label. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't like, I don't sure. like am I, am I the asshole because it's not helpful. It's just a label. It's like, all right, so you're an asshole. Then, then what? Do you get a? Do you have to wear a t-shirt with it 
on your fucking face forever? Did, oh, you're not an asshole? No. Oh, do you get a ribbon? No, there's no but point. It, there's no It might make me make the an declaration appearance at my grandparents' funeral. Not. Do you want to? Maybe. Not really. No, I'm not a huge funeral person anyway, but the main reason why I'm not going to this funeral is because I will see that part of the family and like I have bad dreams about running into them. So <laughs> Okay. Jamie, how old are you? I'm thirty six. Jamie, you're thirty six. You don't have to fucking do anything you don't want to do. For any and if whether or not somebody on the internet thinks you're an asshole or not, or or s- being reasonable or not, or if I think you're being reasonable, who gives a shit? If you don't want to go, then wh- don't go. You're gonna. You we're all slowly dying. Why do you? Why does it matter? If you don't want to go, don't go. For sure, I won't go if I don't want to go. But a lot of people think I'm in the wrong, and so it makes me consider it a little more carefully. I only get one chance to either go or not go. You know. Okay. So, do you think you'll there, regret? There really not, isn't anybody there I need to impress. Do, do but, you think you'll regret? You know, you don't have to ever impress anyone ever. Do you? think you'll regret not going? I don't think so, no. My husband says that one day my son will resent me for not letting him go. How old's your son? He's 12 now. Does he want to go? Mm, I mean, I haven't sat him down and asked if he wants to go to his great-grandparents' funeral. Uh, But he's not extremely close to them because I've put distance between them. Um, he, he does want to kick his cousin's ass though. Uh, he's made that pretty clear. Don't, don't let him kick his cousin's ass. Is, no, his cousin, I his can't gonna, because he'll hurt him really bad. Uh, yeah, I would assume yes. It, it's the grandparents' funeral. Yes. And, and he just want he wants to go so he can beat up his cousin. Um, so we haven't talked about the funeral, but he wants to see the cousin again because he wants to be given an opportunity to like that an, like an opportunity, to, an, an, to oppor- just, an opportunity to what? To deck him, like punch him, or okay, start a fight. The, yeah, don't do that. No, I don't want that. I don't right. want that. Here's the also, thing. my kid l- would hurt the other kid really bad because my kid's a badass. Okay, and the other kid's a wimp. But yeah. that's very cool. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing: um, if your if your son sat down with you and was like, "Hey," Um, I know you have a strained relationship with grandpa, but I I want to go. I want to pay my respects. You should let him go. If he sits down with you and he goes, hey, I want to um, uh, go there to beat up my cousin and uh, mm-hmm. uh, shove sh- a charcuterie board in his ass, don't let him go. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I suppose I and would then, if he told me very seriously that he wanted to. I would probably allow that. Again, I'm going to talk more about the, the whole I, the whole am I the asshole thing. It's like the whole the declaration of asshole or not asshole is an unhelpful thing. It's like what what are we going to do? You know, move, move, moving forward, what's going to make your life the best? You know, that's what you want, right? Yeah. So yeah. So, so for me personally, I definitely don't want to go. So I guess the real question is. Like, whether or not, like, I really don't want to sit down and ask him or even put it in his mind. You know, if he doesn't consider that he wants to go, then I'm not going to go out of the way to be like, are you sure you don't want to go? You know? Well, if he says he only wants to go to beat up another kid, don't let him go. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the only reason he wants to see his cousin in general. Occasionally, he will ask about it. And I'll tell him, like, nah, you know, we're not going over there. And then he'll tell me that he would really like to, you know, size this kid up. And I'm like, that's not healthy. Okay. Um, look, I know that this is kind of what my podcast is about. Actually, you know what? No, I don't think this. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe you can make an argument that this is what my podcast is about. But I don't think this is what my podcast is about. But anyway, don't try and seek validation about your life choices uh, from strangers. No, what you say is not going to be the end all be all. Okay, good, good. But Don't I take think anything I say or someone else. It's a completely else. clean opinion to consider. You know, because everybody that I, you know, that knows about the situation obviously has a stake in it. Why did the people on the internet think you were in the wrong? 
Um, okay, the people, I didn't really get a response from the people on the internet because the, the mods of Am I the Asshole took it down because it had sexual content or whatever. So it got taken down before I really, maybe one or two replies and that was it. And they were just cursory. You know, they weren't, they didn't even have enough time to get any attention. So I don't really know what the court of public opinion would have said on Am I the Asshole, which is why I'm calling. Um, you, Jamie, you said, how many, how many kids do you have? Um, I have one that lives with me and one that lives with her father. Okay. Are you, are you, are, are you dating anyone? Married to anyone? I'm married. Okay. Do you have a job? I do. I'm a teacher. Oh, that's great. Do you have hobbies and interests? Yeah, I have a few, mostly my kids, but I do have some hobbies that are truly my own. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I would do if I were you. Do you want to hear it? Do you want, and I'll, I'll only tell you this if you want to hear it. Yeah, I would love to know. I think you should um, decide whether or not you're going to go to the grandparents' funeral. Okay, and then once you make that decision, you should stop thinking about it. And either uh, go spend time with your husband, go spend time with your kid, go enjoy your hobbies, or uh, go think about how you can be the best teacher you can be. Okay? Go, li go live your life. That's f such great advice. Such great um, advice. And, you know, and, here's the th and here's the thing. All of the, and the great thing is that all of what I just said, you can do all of it. Even if you are the asshole, according to Ray. <laughs> Isn't that right, the beautiful thing about life? It is. It is. It is. Jamie, is there anything and else you want to I say really to the people of the... I don't care that much about... Oh, I hear you. Well, I really don't care that much about what people think. So whether I'm the asshole or not wasn't going to make the decision. But I do appreciate it. I am going to make a decision and I'm going to stick to it. And I'm not going to uh, worry about it. Jamie, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Nope, you're awesome. Love you, Have stream. a good night. Thank you, dude. Bye. Oh, my God. Hi, who is this? Um, hi, my name is Svan. Svan? Mm-hmm. Okay, Svan. Uh, how old are you, Svan? 18. Okay. Um... What's up? What's going on? What did you call to talk about? Um, so I have an obsession with fictional characters. And I don't mean that in like the typical way where it's like someone who like can't get a girl and they're like and like you know, like they're like an incel and stuff. So like they don't like they can't really get a relationship because they don't know how to socialize with real people. Like I, I am in a relationship. It's more of like, you know, with fictional characters, you don't actually have to like have that vulnerability with them. So it's like it's like a one sided attachment and stuff. Like I'm like but like I literally am so obsessed with them to the fact that it's like consumed my life. All right. So you are in a so so you're attracted to these fictional characters because yeah. <laughs> this because this and attraction like, it's cringy, but well okay but you said you're attracted to these fictional characters because you say that the lack of intimacy is what is appealing yeah because like i don't actually have to be vulnerable like yeah. i can get to know them but yeah they don't have to get to know me yeah it's great it's great i get you i get you but yet you are in a you have a boyfriend Oh no. Um Yeah. I am confused. You just said you're in a relationship of some kind. Oh yeah. Um I'm what's in a what's called a queer platonic relationship. So I'm not I'm you're not straight, a, so I have two partners. You're in a queer platonic so, relationship um, with it's, two it's, partners. It's um it's it's kind of hard to explain. It's like when you're more than friends, but not exactly like you wouldn't exactly do sexual shit with them. Like a like a like a situation ship. No, it, it, it's different. It's kind of hard to explain when you're not. Um, basically, it's like 
I, I describe it as like, basically, it's like being a re- in a relationship as if you were asexual. That's basically to sum it up. Like, think okay. of it that way. Do you do you consider? And you don't have to fucking tell me anything you don't want to. But do you do you consider yourself asexual? Um, no. It's more of like I don't know. I f- I feel like it's more of like the reason why I I like obsess over fictional characters is more of like I feel like if people were to actually know me, they wouldn't like me. So it's easier sure. to just pretend to like be attached to things that to like people that aren't real. Yeah, sure, sure. You ever, you ever, you ever uh, fuck around on Chat GPT? That oh would yeah, really fuck that's, you that's up. mainly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you ever use the the what the Snapchat AI? Oh no, that that one sucks. <laughs> um. Okay. Well. All right. So you're in a uh, queer platonic. Yeah. All right. Is this a romance? It's so. I guess what I don't. Is this a romantic yeah. kind of relationship? Or are you? Yeah. I, I actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? Actually, no. I'm, th- I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. I actually don't really care about the specifics of this. Uh, uh, yeah. Whatever this it's relationship. Really is, what, well, well, here's what. Here's what I'm saying. It's, here's what I'm getting. Whatever the whatever. Who cares about the specifics? Is this predicament, yeah. in a broad sense, making you happy? Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. That's, That's all like, that matters. As an individual, you know, relationships don't solve your problems. Like, you have to fix them on your own. So, like, it's not... I still have these, like, feelings, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. So, you're in a, a... Some form of a of a, of a a predicament that is satisfying the needs yeah. that you have in your, in your no, romantic life. No, no, it's not life. that my relationships aren't real. It's more of, like, because of my own issues, I still, like... Well, hold on. Hold on. Like, hold on. Let me... Let me... Let me... Let me... Let me Slow down for a second. What do you mean your relationship is not real? No, no, I didn't say that. I said it's not. That's it's like um, it's not that it's not fulfilling. It is. It's more of like, and also like I'm polyamorous, so like it's not. It's not exactly like oh, like this isn't you know this isn't benefiting me. This isn't what I what I want. It's more of like. And it really has nothing to do with my actual relationship. I only brought that up because a lot of the times when people think of someone who's like obsessed with fictional characters, they come to like they they picture someone who who hasn't who needs to touch grass. So okay. Like, my actual right. relationship isn't really relevant. Okay. Like, so like so. Like, okay. So so. Then in that case, what aspect of this? situation where you are in love with fictional characters what in what ways or in what aspect is it causing you distress if it Um, even is it's more of like it's more of like the reasons for why i'm doing it rather like it, it, it takes like i spend a lot of my days like like a lot of the time in the day um just interacting with stuff instead of like real people so that's not you know do you do you desire to go out and interact with more people i think it's more of like i i focus too much on like you know fictional characters instead of interacting with real people okay Again, do yeah. you, do you, do you desire to go out and interact with real people? No, I do. Okay, it's okay. It's, it's okay if you don't. That's what I'm saying. No, but if I you do. do. But if you do, okay. It's what do you think? Like what do you? Okay, what, what, what do you? Okay, what do you think? What are you afraid of? Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of people have this, but like the deep rooted insecurity that like. People, if like people got to know me like a hundred percent, they wouldn't like me. Okay. Um, it's okay if you have a hard time answering this, but why? Why do you feel that way? Um, I'm not gonna go into detail, but you know, trauma. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's um, it's, it's hard because you know you you think that like 
if you're surrounded by people that like love you and care about you, you would think that like eventually those thoughts would go away. But like when you're told for most of your like your life that all these negative things, it's like hard to erase that. So it's sure. like no matter what people say, it's not it's not enough to convince you otherwise. And it's not exactly like I'm not trying to stop those thoughts, you know? When you say you're you're trying to stop those thoughts, what uh I mean, like, what do you, what you do know, you like do? What do you, what do you do negative, to try to negative st- self talk? Yes. Yeah, so, so are you, do you go to real therapy? Yeah, I do. Okay. What do they tell you in real therapy? Um, well, I mean, I've like, they just say like affirmations. Like, I honestly, like, I just only did this because, <laughs> like, I am serious. Like, I'm not making this up, but I did this because like, you know what? I want to, I want to do things like I want to do in life. And this is one of the things, you know, I'm being a little bit adventurous. So like, I'm not like using this as an outlet for like actual therapy. What are you talking about? Making uh, shit up and stuff. You're not using what as an actual outlet for therapy? Um, you, (laughs) I mean. Okay. Sure. But I'm just trying, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm 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 just trying to think of like, yeah what's gonna help i just like situation. thought it'd be interesting to hear someone else um an outside perspective because okay. this is um some aspects i do talk about but like you know when it's a when it's a complete stranger it's easier to talk about you know like the fictional character aspects than when it's like my real therapist like i'm i'm vague about it but give enough details that like they they can help me but yeah <sighs> Mm, okay. What's your name again? Zone. Fawn. S- what? Fawn. Fawn. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna Wait, call you. you I'm gonna call you Jennifer because for some reason the phone keeps cutting out every time that you try okay, to tell fine. me your name. Okay. Um. Jennifer. I'm. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me this. Well, okay, so you're what are you are you graduating high school? Are you going to college? Where where are you at? Yeah. Okay. What are you gonna go to what are you gonna go to school for? Um, I don't really know yet. All right. Um because look, all the things you're talking about, you you're in a good position to uh uh go out into the universe and you're in a good position to go out into the universe and meet these real people yeah that we're talking about no i feel and, like um, i feel like um, at some at a certain point at a certain yeah. point i think the i don't know i think a lot about this stuff i think a lot about this stuff and i think at a certain point there's a bit a little bit of that nike just do it that yeah. you gotta you gotta surmise yeah, definitely. Uh, in 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 your in your blood veins and once you know what the it is right whether it's i don't know if you're going to college but if you're in college you're going to you're going out to the yeah. to the to the to fucking science club whatever you're into i don't know what you're into but mm-hmm. you're, you're you're putting you you're putting yourself out there you're making that decision to put yourself out there yeah thanks man. and you're and you're understanding that this idea that uh, people are inherently not going to like you is is an idea that somebody else planted within you, and now you, as yeah. an adult, do not have to dwell on the past and hold yourself to this idea that uh, that uh, another person has implanted within you. Thank you. <laughs> um. So I hope you understand that. I hope that um that that empowers you and you know what if you want to if you and you know what also as an adult if you want to mm-hmm. fucking go look at naked pictures of jimmy neutron <laughs> on your off days you can do that shit too so yeah. don't freak out about it okay what fawn, fawn jennifer jennifer is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go 
Um, don't be afraid to be you. It's okay to be cringe as long as, you, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Have a good rest of the night. All right. Thanks. There's some great naked pictures of Jimmy Neutron out there on the internet. And uh, I don't, I think a lot about staying in versus going out. And that's a lot of what we just talked about. This whole thing of like, I'm on the computer. I can't stop looking at, at hentai. But yet, I and I want to go meet real people. Sometimes staying in is nice. To a degree. There's a balance there. I don't know what that balance is. And it's different for different people. I have my own little balance. I was thinking about this. I was talking about this on my Instagram thing. You know. I really feel like. I've done a good amount. Of going out and talking to real people in my life. Both personally. And you know on this show. And in. um, In. And talking to real people uh, across the world, doing all the travel and doing all this touring and stuff. You know, I've really gone, I've really done a lot of putting myself out there. But also, forgetting about all that stuff, I've spent way more time sitting at home looking at hentai. You know? So, so there's a balance. There's a balance. That's all I'm trying to say. Hello? Joe? Yes. What's up, Joe? How you doing? Good. How are you? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually feeling pretty, pretty good. I'm excited to, I like to talk. I like to hear that. I uh, big fan of the show. Thanks, man. It's, uh, it's funny because uh, when I listen to the Spotify podcast, I play it 1.2 times fast. Mm. So I know you're talking normally, but it seems to me that you're talking very slowly. But it's just the way it is. That's actually a good idea. I think um, I, I'm a big fan of that. I think I think I have a good podcast to listen to on a 1.5 speed. I feel I I sometimes think I talk a little bit slow. And when I when I go to like edit my clips and stuff, I'll also I'll listen on 1.5 speed. That's uh, yeah, I, I find that 1.2 is a sweet spot for me. But you have a very good 1.2 speed sound. Do you listen to do you listen to other podcasts on on one point five or just me or one point two whatever your frequency is? Um, one point two is my go to. I don't want to rush through it too quickly. I want to still you know savor the podcast, but you know sometimes things can feel too slow. It's efficient. It's efficient. Joe, uh, it's cool if you don't. But is there anything you wanted to talk about in particular today? So there was something I want to talk about. I don't know how you would think about it, but I just sure. want to call in and share my share my opinion. Sure. Um, I I live in this place, and to get to another place, I have to cross a bridge. And since I was a little kid, we've, as a family and a car, have driven across this bridge many times. At the other end of at the bottom of the bridge, at one end is a is a water treatment facility. I don't know if you've driven past one, but it smells like shit. Sorry, I can't say that, but it smells like poop. And when I was a kid, we'd always roll. You, you, I, I, I just, oh, I just, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but you listen to the podcast, right? I do. You, you can never mind. I just, it's, it's just, it's always funny to me when people are like asking if they can cuss, and it's like the, you know, people, people cuss all the time. But go, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't know why I interrupted you. It's off. That's the thing. So I drive over this bridge many times, and I'll, I'll kind of speed it up. But long story short, it smells like poop. And when I was a kid, we hated the smell. I hated the smell. I rolled up the window, turned off the AC. But recently, over the last few years, as a you know a young adult now, I've actually come to the realization I actually like the smell, and uh, it's kind of like I was listening to an episode where this caller was talking about a kink. And I think this might be mine, where whenever I come across a bridge, I'll roll down the window and I'll take a sniff as I'm going across the bridge. And sometimes it smells really sour, but sometimes it's you don't smell anything at all. I guess there's just not enough poop in the water to make it smell. But every time so, you cross the bridge, so you're... I get a little excited. 
So your kink is that when you smell poop, you think of family car rides. But not and any like only specifically over this bridge. Over you, the water treatment facility. What's your name? Your name is Joe, right? Joe. Joe, I don't think you know what a kink is. Maybe I don't. Do you what do you, this is this is not a kink. I mean, well, I like mean, is this, I mean, like not make, perceived as like a normal thing. Is this a, you know is this saying? a sexual thing? No, no, not, nothing at all sexual. Okay, Just I don't. That, you know, gets me excited. Yeah, I th- I th- I think you can have things that get you excited that are not necessarily kinks. Kinks would be something sexual. Okay, I, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Or I don't I don't know actually I don't know the official definition of kink. You might be right, but uh, at least I, I at wrong. least the with the societal interpretation of a kink. If you uh, go around saying that your kink is that uh, when you smell poop, it reminds you of a very fond memory you have with your family. That wouldn't come off, I think, the way that you think it would. Mm, interesting. Yeah, but it's you're funny exce- that's these. What you picked up in the conversation? Yeah, so I wouldn't continue to refer to that as a kink. It's a nice thing, though. Um, Thank you. So when you uh, go over this bridge and you smell poop, it reminds you. It's, it's, it's this is this is nostalgia. This is more nostalgia yes. than it would be a a sexual kink. Yes, but it's also a thing where I I look forward to it, and I mm. I'm always fascinated by the different types of smell that this place kind of gives out into the world. And I always wonder what it's going to smell like the day I drive over it. You know, the next time I I don't drive the bridge every day. So whenever I do cross it, I, I always wonder what it's going to smell like. And then I roll down the window and then you, you get a good whiff. You close the window and you think about it. Do any of these smells make you hard? Oh, I don't think so. No. I, okay, then it's not no. a kink. Um, and look, it'd be fine if it was. I mean, some people's kink is, um, you know, bad stuff. But that's you're fine. What's your name, Joe? Sorry. Well, Joe, thanks for sharing that. Are you planning on re- where? Where? Where's this bridge located? Where? You don't have to dox yourself if it's if if you think the information would dox you, but where 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 is this bridge located? If any of our listeners want to go smell the same smell, it's uh, located. Uh, I guess just north of the border in uh, the beautiful British Columbia. Okay, so it's on the border of British Columbia. It's uh, it's just in the by the city of Vancouver. I I think you were here recently. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Um, Vancouver is a beautiful city. I it smelled it smelled wonderful. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Nothing. All right. Take care, Joe. Thank you for calling the show. Take care. I do. I do think that's a. I like that as a concept, though. This idea that. Um, so okay, I know this scientifically that the memory is in the hippocampus, and so is smell. I think, and so that's why smells are so heavily addicted, so heavily associated with memory. And that is a funny concept of you know smells are are can be associated with certain memories, and the smell doesn't necessarily have to be good. Um, to link to the memory. So you could smell something bad like poop and it can link to a beautiful memory of a family car ride. It also works the other way around. You could smell um, donuts and it could remind you of a time where your father tried to strangle you with one. It's an interesting concept. Thank you for sharing that, Joe. Hello, folks. It's Lyle. This is the end of the episode. The episode 
has ended. But get this, I have a whole other episode, a whole 54-minute bonus episode that is available to Supercast Premium Therapy Gecko subscribers who sign up at therapygecko.supercast.com. Supercast Premium Gecko subscribers get all currently existing episodes completely ad-free. They get a bonus episode a month. They get a bonus live show episode a month. And they help me very much in my ability to continue hopefully doing this show for many more years. So anyway, here's a little clip from this week's bonus episode. What's going on, man? Uh Last year, I got arrested, actually twice. I currently have four felonies. What What exactly got you into that situation? Um, I was walking around this little tiny town, and um, I later realized that I was actually overdosing. Um, so I was pretty much kind of dying. And um, the uh, cops... Um, somebody called them because I was just wandering around and they knew I wasn't doing well, the person that called them. And when the cops walked over to me, I don't remember it, but I just completely attacked them. <laughs> if you'd like to hear that full conversation, you can go to therapygecko.supercast.com or find the link in this episode description to uh, go sign up and become a premium member. All right. OK, this is it's really the end now. It's really the end of the podcast. I'm pacing around my room and pulling at my hair while I'm recording this voice memo on my iPhone. And um, I don't feel very good.